Anyway, graduated from North Dakota in 91. Um, uh, left out of state. It's not because I wanted to. It was because I was Razorbacks. I was too slow for them to recruit me. I went to Louisiana Tech. Went down there, tricked them into giving me a football scholarship for four years. And got my education paid for. And as soon as I graduated there, I got back to North Little Rock as quick as I could. Uh, that was in 1996. Opened up my own business. Um, as a child, I was obsessed with baseball cards, just like a lot of people in this room were. The difference with me is... When people grew up, they, mom threw them away and they stopped dealing with them. And I was, I never grew out of it. I stayed completely obsessed with it. I bought a, a lot of people's cards that their mom were about to throw away in this room. And um, I um, started doing it as a business. I was 10 years old. Um, actually, that was the first time I paid to set up at a trade show. It was at the Billy Mitchell Boys Club in Little Rock. It was $25 for a booth, which was a lot of money. And that was the first time I did it as a dealer. Uh, fell in love with it. I think I sold a whopping, I think it was $180 that day, but it was more than the $25 it cost me, and I said, man, I'm going to do whatever chance I get. Um, started doing trade shows, my parents were, were more than supportive, and I think that is, uh, that's the biggest thing I can say, that you know, any secret to my success, what little bit I've had, uh, give to my parents for not telling me it was a silly idea, for not trying to make me do something else. They were always there. If I wanted to be taken across town, or when my mom hovered in my bedroom door, there'd be a grown man in a business suit sitting down Indian style because I'd ran a buying ad in the, in the Arkansas Gazette and I was buying old cards. And they'd show up from Oklahoma or Missouri or wherever and she would hover in the door afraid that one of these men was there to kidnap me or something. <laughs> <laughs> they were just there to get the money from this 10 year old kid. But um, that's what I did. Um, started doing bigger shows when I was 13. I set up at the uh, National Sports Collectors Convention. It was uh, 1,100 dealers from across the country. Uh, they wouldn't let me in the door because my dad wasn't with me. And I told him my dad was back home in North Little Rock trying to pay the bills, sell insurance. And so that was kind of my pattern. I did everything at a real young age. Um, got, to, got to know all the main players in my industry that are still heads of auction houses and, and big figures in our industry um, 25 years ago. They laugh at it now. They're 60 years old. And, you know, look at me back. that I was their age back then, and I'm still in it. But anyway, that was... The, the pattern, I, I had a lot of success doing it, got out of college, graduated with a marketing and business management degree, and thought I'm either going to go sell radio ads or work for somebody else or do something I don't want to do, or I'm going to keep doing what I, what I like. Uh, Angelica, my lovely wife, was my fiance then, and I didn't have enough nerve to go tell my dad I was going to do this as a career, so I made her go with me. <laughs> <laughs> and we broke the news, and his only concern, it was a big deal for my dad, he bought me a suit for graduation. And that was all he said. He bought me two suits? Okay, two suits. And he said, what are you going to do with those suits? That was a big thing. And I, don't, I, don't, I think I wore one a couple times at a funeral, and that was about it. But anyway, we uh, started my business in 96. It was, a, it was a struggling retail business before the boom of the Internet, before eBay. First couple of years were a real grind, a real struggle. And a lot of times I remember thinking, man, I hope those suits still fit me because I'm going to have to go get a real job. Luckily, it took off. Um, the, uh, the explosion of the internet was the difference. We suddenly were not trapped by our region. Uh, anything I purchased, we could sell it all. We could put it online, and whereas the guy in Minnesota was never going to walk into North Little Rock and buy the Minnesota Vikings things we had, online he could. And uh, we were one of the first ones to really push, push a lot of product online uh, back in 96, 97, 98. Um, we were kind of ahead of the curve on that, which helped us a lot get our foot in the door. Um, that really put us into a uh, really different level. We started, things got really easy at that point. It, it, it began to uh, develop to where we had enough cash flow, we started buying out entire dealers. We would go to bankruptcy auctions and buy out uh, FLIR trading cards. It's been around forever. We purchased them at bankruptcy auction when I was, when I was 28 years old, bought FLIR. Um, we made some significant purchases because we had capital then, um, which is, of course, a business everybody in here knows that's the that's the oxygen. Um, around 03, we um, it grew a little bit further. We got into um, baseball photography, mostly sports photography, because it was a collectible. I soon found out that you can take that image and you can lease that image to a media outlet. That's where we are today. We um, between 02 and 03, up to about 08, we painstakingly put together an archive of about three million images from buying out private photographers, buying out stock agencies, other businesses, and we took those images and we would make them available to the public. I get asked this question 10 times a day, how do you make money doing that? 
And the answer is simple. If you read a magazine, if you watch a documentary on television, if you watch a movie, if you watch HBO, ESPN, as people are talking, you'll see an image flash up, a still image. It's not always film. And if they're doing a documentary on Mickey Mantle, and as they're talking about Mickey Mantle being injured, they want to show an image of him at the doctor. They want to show an image of him with a bandage on his knee. And they have to get those images somewhere. ESPN didn't start until 1979. They weren't shooting Mickey Mantle during his career. They weren't, they weren't taking photos of Babe Ruth. So they have to pay for those images. They have to pay a one-time usage rate, which normally averages about $150 for one-time usage. They want to use it multiple times and run that over and over. They have to pay every time. Uh, just yesterday, Sparky Anderson, I don't know if you guys saw the longtime baseball manager, Hall of Famer, died. Um, immediately on Bloomberg News, I think it's in our thing, we'll pull up here in a minute, Bloomberg News hit it within 30 minutes of his death, and the image they used came from the Rogers Photo Archive. So that goes out to every paper, every news organization in the country. Every time someone picks it up, they pay for that image, the rights to use that image. Um, 